This program is produced by the volunteers of Teleco Village Broadcasting. Welcome to another special presentation of Teleco Village Broadcasting. I'm your host, Elliot Domans, and to my immediate right is Tom Lee and then Tom McPhee. We're going to find out today about two very special entities here in Teleco Village. We're going to find out about the new Toqua Clubhouse that's going up, and we're also going to find out about Kahiti. On Tuesday the 13th of February, we had the official groundbreaking ceremony at Toqua. Uh, the existing building had already been demolished and uh, the contractor was beginning preparation to uh, start construction of new facilities. So there were uh, about 100 people in attendance. That we've all been waiting on quite some time and that is the groundbreaking ceremony for the Toqua Clubhouse. So uh, take a look at it, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> To say that there was great enthusiasm for that ceremony would be an understatement. You had, on the same day, yes, a groundbreaking ceremony for the new Kahiti Pavilion, right? We did. We had uh, board members. We had uh, the mayor of, of Von Orr there. We had people from uh, the Monroe Economic uh, Development uh, State. We had uh, well over a hundred uh, residents. <laughs> did the groundbreaking followed by champagne toast and uh, taco uh, lunch dinner in the pub. Now Tom McPhee, what's your involvement with the Kahiti program? Uh, so there, there should be um, about four other, five other people sitting here talking to this that uh, unfortunately for me decided to go south and somewhere warmer. So, so it was your turn to be in the barrel, right? I guess so. Okay. It sounds to me like this project has been in the works for a long, long time. Is that true? It, it is. It was uh, originally on the plan back in, I think, 2008. And because of the downturn, it, it uh, got taken off. But it really got its uh, second wind again in 2014. The uh, POA board at that time commissioned an engineering team, engineering firm, to do a uh, master site plan uh, for the Kahiti neighborhood. And of course, it included the uh, replacing the double wide community center with a new permanent structure and a portico to go in between the two. Tom, tell us and our viewers how the project got funded for this. The, the majority of, of the funding is, is uh, from the POA uh, board and the amenity uh, reserve fund is covering the most of it. Uh, private residents have, have raised uh, over 200,000 to help go towards that and that money will actually be allocated to the portico. So the portico will be built by the 200,000 private funding mm -hmm. and furnished while the uh, annex will be built out of the amenity fund and the POA board. Now the initiative and private funding seem to get started uh, as a grassroots movement. Tell us a little bit about that, Tom. A group of people um, took out the, the uh, two, two parts of that master site plan, which was replacing the double wide with a permanent structure and the covered portico, and actually sloganed it, uh, replace the double wide in our lifetime with, <laughs> with, with, with a asterisks. And uh, now they're going to get their wish, aren't now, they? Now we're, we're getting, we're excited. Uh, it's for, a for, dream come true. It, it is. The first tax that they had to complete was get a uh, right of private funding provision and get that approved uh, through, through the uh, POA board. Next, how it got really started was uh, there was a standard presentation developed. Neighborhoods, uh, people got together. I think there was at start around 13 or 14, got together, held pledge drives in their, in their homes, oh. showed the presentation, invited their neighbors over, and asked for uh, $1,000 to be donated over three years with the promise that if the contract wasn't signed for construction by the end of 2018, they would get their money back. It was a, a, a huge success. We, uh, we got donations from $500 to 5000 What did you end up getting? 
it, it, it was an overwhelming uh, success. We had 171 families to date so far, and not all from Kahiti, from, from other uh, Teleco Village neighborhoods as well. Uh, donate, uh, we're just slightly over the 200,000 mark, $200,600. How will that money be used? Uh, the, the private funding uh, has been allocated to build the portico. We've written a check uh, to uh, POA for 148000 to cover the uh, basic construction of it. The rest of the money will be to put curtains, heaters, tables and chairs, and effectively will double the seating capacity of the pub and grill there all year round. The existing clubhouse will stay the same, but the uh, portico will, will uh, be in between the new annex okay. and, and, and the, existing, the existing restaurant and clubhouse. Obviously people are excited about starting this starting to take shape, right? Yeah, we had, uh, we had two days um, uh, where, where we had about 80 people each day come up for, for, for lunch and, and uh, drinks and uh, uh, watch, watch the dismantlement of the, of the double wide, which was an amazing, amazing feat the way they did it and uh, actually uh, get lo loaded up and uh, pulled out of the parking lot. And it was uh, a very, very loud cheer as it left. Was that something that could be resold where you could plow the dollars back into part of your funding or, it's or did it just leave and that was the end of it? It, it actually got repurposed and uh, is sitting today at Toqua as the uh, temporary clubhouse while, while the Toqua clubhouse uh, gets, gets rebuilt. Eventually it will go as a uh, public works building. So now after the, the construction of all of this that's happening, how is it going to be utilized as a new facility? The, the uh, permanent annex will be 2,600 square feet, which will provide for all Atelico Village a much needed uh, meeting space. It'll be used uh, much the same as you would uh, use Chota. It'll be used for Mahjong groups, craft groups, uh, Pilates, yoga, ec exercise, uh, hand and foot card games, um, quarterly meetings where, where we get over 150 people. The portico will, as I said, expand the seating capacity. We have Wednesday night socials um, every Wednesday night, and we literally run out of seats now with the, you know, with the annex being gone and the patio being compromised with the con construction. So that'll be utilized uh, for the Wednesday night socials and the music nights. What are we talking about as a completion date approximately for all this to take place? The, the completion date is, is uh, July 28th, which is going to happen really, really fast. And there's, yeah. uh, so we're, we're getting excited. They've already uh, started. Let's take a look now at Toqua. Toqua, the oldest golf club in Teleco Village. Tom, you're on. Tell us about Toqua. I first got involved in the Toqua project when I was uh, on the golf committee um, back in 2012 and 13. At that time, the golf committee uh, was petitioning the board to take a look at rebuilding the Toqua clubhouse. Uh, the building is currently over 35 years old and has become way too small for our needs and frankly doesn't uh, project a very attractive appearance. The project actually started back in 2006 and I was not a part of that. Uh, there were plans done to create a very large clubhouse along the lines of Tenassi, uh, which would have underground cart storage and be a pretty good sized building. The price tag on that building was estimated to be about 2.8 million at that time. And so preliminary plans were begun. Unfortunately, the uh, economic situation in 2008 uh, made that project prohibitive and that was shelved. In 2011, the golf course looked, or the golf committee began to look at how could we refurbish, expand the existing Toka Clubhouse. And we actually hired an engineering firm to do some preliminary 
work on doing that. Uh, the price tag was estimated to be about one million dollars, but then we learned that based on the construction of the existing clubhouse that current building codes would make that prohibitive because once you do that uh, amount of renovation expansion, then the whole building has to be brought up to code, and that was just uh, going to be impractical. So in 2016, the golf committee, uh, namely Chuck James and Jim West, went to Dorchester, having heard about a new clubhouse they'd built at Fairfield Glades called the Dorchester Clubhouse, and they went and looked at that and thought that that type of facility would really just about fit our needs. And they had built that building for about 1.8 million, which we thought was a pretty reasonable price. So came, they came back to the board and asked the board to take, begin to take a look at that type of building, which they did. Uh, the board formed an exploratory committee and began, began to look at uh, the project along those lines. In 2017, that committee consisting of myself, Chuck James, Jeannie Fancher, Jim West, and uh, Andy Fox, our uh, restaurant uh, contractor, uh, began looking at some preliminary plans to do that. And we met with the Upline des Design Group, which had uh, designed the Dorchester Clubhouse, and they gave us some preliminary sketches on what the new building might look like along the lines that we needed. Then in 2018, the board authorized funds to do some serious architectural work uh, and start some preliminary cost estimates. The board had put $2.4 million in the long range plan for this project uh, for 2019. So actually the, the estimates that we received from Upland Design Group came right in that ballpark at $2.4 million. So again in 2018, uh, we conducted, we finished a needs analysis of the project and the board approved construction drawings to be done so that we could take the project out for bid. Those were completed in uh, mid-year 2018. We took the project out for bid and in fact, we're pleasantly surprised to learn that um, the project would come in with within the uh, 2.4 million that was in the five-year plan. So, uh, town hall was conducted in November of 2018. We had over 600 residents in attendance. Uh, the presentation uh, included the entire scope of the project as well as funding mechanisms, how we're gonna pay for it. And there was overwhelming support for the project. Therefore, in December, the board uh, approved the TOCA project the bid was awarded and now construction has begun. In January, late January, demolition began, has now been completed, uh, and if we can get it to stop raining for a day or two, we'll start pouring <laughs> footings for the new building. So that's where we are. We expect the completion date to be late October, November, and uh, it's a cost of $2.4 million. The, uh, New facility will consist of about 6,600 square feet. The old building was 3,200 square feet. The pro shop will be approximately the same size as the old pro shop. Where we added all the space was in the restaurant. Uh, formerly, the restaurant had seats for 51. The new restaurant will have seats for 100. And uh, we'll have a sports bar theme. We'll have about five large screen TVs in there. And we think that the, uh, the restaurant will be a social focal point for the whole community. Well, that's a fantastic thing that's going to be happening right away over at Toqua. The old clubhouse is gone. That's disappeared into dump trucks, I'm sure. Dump trucks are plenty. And now you're just really waiting for this East Tennessee rain to subside so that you can get started on the footers for the real project. I'd like to thank both my guests today. I'd like to thank, first of all, Tom McPhee from Kahiti for his presentation, and then Tommy Lee for his presentation on Toqua. We want to tell you and remind you that 
This is a special presentation from Teleco Village Broadcasting. I want to thank all of you for viewing today and have a pleasant day and we hope to see you very soon.